What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing a review on EXM's Premium once again. Uh, this is right before his V2 drops, so we're going to see if anything has updated or changed uh, before he releases his new utility. I want to see if there was any improvements, or if it got worse, or what happened. Uh, now if you haven't seen my last video, I made a video on EXM Premium a couple months back. I benchmarked it myself. I showed that the results got worse for me. Uh, you know, I got a lot of comments and people hitting me up about that video. Some people agreeing with me, some not. And I just want to talk about that real quickly. So first of all, I got comments that were like, well, it's different with, you know, various PCs and it depends on your specs. I got people from EXM's moderation that hit me up. Uh, and basically said that the benchmarks were fake and all this stuff so I wanted to come back and I wanted to make another video seeing if they fixed the utility and if you know my benchmarks were wrong all that good stuff so today I've got two people benchmarking now one of them is Bills which a lot of you could argue that's biased since Bills runs Lumen with me I get that uh, but the second benchmarker open up a ticket in Lumen and I'll actually show proof on the screen now here's a screenshot of when he initially opened the ticket you can see that you know he wasn't a friend of mine or anything like this he just came out of the blue and wanted to show me benchmarks so we're gonna be digging into all that today and much more I'll even be looking at some of the registry uh, that was applied by this utility that Bills and I found and we're gonna go into all that so let's get into it all right, so in the background, you can see Bills and Lazy are applying all of the tweaks. They went from start to finish through the whole utility, making sure to apply every single thing and all the sections and not missing out on any tweaks. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show Bills' side first once we get done applying these things. And I'm going to show a couple of screenshots of what Bills was saying to me uh, right after he benchmarked it. So let's get into that. So the first thing Bill said was that his PC was being slow and that he was having trouble booting. Bill's actually called me uh, on the phone and was showing me his screen and like his Fortnite was taking forever to load, his apps wouldn't open uh, and all kinds of issues. And this is not exaggerated, it really was that bad. Here's another screenshot of when he got into his PC, finally he checked Task Manager. His CPU speed was at 0.78 gigahertz. And he ended up having to reset his BIOS uh, because something was conflicting, you know, whether it was from EXM or who knows what was capping out his speed. So then finally when he got to benchmark it, this is what the FPS results were looking like. As you can see, Bills went from 147 in the lows down to just 95 and lost out on around, you know, 30, 20-ish FPS, 20 to 30 FPS on the average. Now, one thing about the lows is, you know, when you're dropping this much in lows, it's going to make the game significantly feel worse. Lows are typically more important than your average FPS just because, you know, when you start looking around or building or whatever and your FPS is dropping, it's going to make your game feel horrible. And it's just not good at all. So now I'll show on the screen uh, the latency benchmarks. So as you can see, uh, the DXG kernel stayed just about the same with the spikes actually going up. The NTOS kernel dropped by one in the average um, and dropped a little bit in the max. So that is one improvement that we had. Um, and then the NVLD went up in spikes, which this is arguably the most important driver. Uh, you know, when the NVLD latency is increasing, you're going to feel it in the game. You're going to feel stutters and whatnot. And then lastly, the USB, uh, this also went up in latency in the average and the max. So now that we've gotten Bills' benchmarks out of the way, let's go ahead and see a completely unbiased review. So this next benchmark, like I said, is from Lazy. Uh, shout out to him, he's in my Discord, and he got us this benchmark. So as you can see, uh, the Valorant before and after, his lows did go up with EXM, but he dropped 80 average FPS, which is a big decrease. I mean, you could argue that getting the 40 boost in the lows uh, is like a good thing. I mean, obviously it is. Trading 80 average FPS for it though, I'm not entirely sure if that's worth it, at least for Valorant. 
But then we move on to the Fortnite benchmarks. This benchmark is insane to me. The lows go nearly to half, and he went from 400 FPS to only averaging 250. This is worse than Bills' benchmark, which was insane to me. Um, and I just can't believe he got that low of results. Now, Lazy also benchmarked latency in both Fortnite and Valorant, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, he is on an AMD build, so the latency is a little bit different. Uh, you know, you can see the AMD drivers really did not change much at all, stayed about the same. Uh, now, his DXG kernel nearly doubled in average latency, which is really bad. Um, and I don't know if I said this earlier, but the DXG kernel is what handles your graphics along with your GPU driver. So this is a significant increase in latency. And then his NTOS kernel uh, stayed just about the same with his USB increasing quite a bit. Uh, and then we have the Valorant before and after. So with the Valorant before and after, again, the AMD drivers uh, not really changing that much. Now, I don't know why one of the AMD drivers wasn't showing up on the second benchmark. It must have just been a bug with the test. But from what we can see, the DXG kernel stayed about the same. The NTOS kernel did drop a little bit when it came to Val. It did go up in the spikes, though. And then we had the USB once again going up in latency. So with all these benchmarks, it just really doesn't look good. Like, you're not getting good latency. The FPS is decreasing, there's problems with Windows itself, and this is just really not good overall. Alright, so next what I want to talk about is the registry implementation. So I found all this stuff in the registry after EXM was ran, and some of it is just baffling to me. So first we're going to take a look at this control power path. Uh, basically, a lot of this registry looks like it's just completely pasted. Some of it may not even exist. Uh, I didn't run through and check what exactly exists and what doesn't, at least for this. But basically, you can see all these melody registries in here. You know, these default D3 latency things and whatnot, uh, like the transition latency, the latency D words, all that is from melody. Now, it looks like EXM has actually put the default D3 registry in the control path. And I'll bump it up on the screen now. You can see from Melody's website, this is supposed to go on the graphics path. So he's pasting registry, stealing it off of another creator, but not even putting it in the right path. I mean, this is just insane that, you know, this is one of the biggest people in the community and this is how low of level the registry implementation is and it doesn't get much better from here so the next thing we're gonna look at is some of the CPU registry stuff that he has so you can see uh, he's setting max performance in the registry max performance one I can tell you with certainty that these don't exist uh, I've run it by other tweakers as well who agree with me like we don't really know what we're looking at here um, and then on top of that the next registry thing I'm about to show you is just completely funny to me uh, it would take you know somebody who's very dumb to think that this is a thing now we have bio settings within the registry so we have disable C state autonomous C state disable C13 uh, the one registry implementation here that I believe does exist is the capabilities D word other than that all this is fake so you're basically applying nothing. This would not do anything at all in the registry. It's not gonna actually disable C states and it's just going to sit there and really like, like I said, not change anything at all. It's completely fake. And same with that other registry I was showing before that you know is put in the wrong path. If you put a registry D word in the wrong path, it's not going to do anything. So you're essentially applying fake tweaks on top of other stuff that is ruining the performance. Another thing I also found that I explained in the last video was the system response to this D word. That was set to zero like we saw with uh, Ryzen. And if you want a more in-depth explanation, I suggest going and watching the Ryzen video. I show documentation on that proving that zero is not a real value when it comes to that D word. Uh, so again more fake stuff 
and really that is all I have to show you I could keep going in this registry stuff and make this a 20 minute long video but I really didn't want to do that I just wanted to show some key examples however the rest of the registry stuff uh, is very either basic or just completely fake now the last thing I'll say about all this this is why you need to be careful when it comes to what you're buying in the tweaking community you know a lot of people fall for the false promotion you know zero delay a thousand FPS type promotion and think that they're gonna get a huge FPS boost when in reality we're applying fake D words and stuff that's just gonna ruin the performance now I hope you have enjoyed my review of EXM if you do want to see more videos like this leave a like and comment what other tweakers I should look into and if you want to check out my tweaks my discords in my description that's discord.gg slash lumen you can also go to lumentweaks.com and view my services we have a very helpful community so if you have any questions pc related we would love to have you and that's about all i have for you guys today i hope you have a good rest of your day and peace out